There's been an ongoing debate about what historic depictions are appropriate for the public square. Public art says a lot about the people who put it up and about the people who sometimes take it down. We look at one project that finds inspiration beyond generals, kings, or founding fathers. Bronze monuments stand in silence, but they speak to our values. A statue is a depiction of honor. A commander on a horse is a message from the past as to who is revered and whose deeds should be lionized for future generations to admire. But the historical record reveals Nathan Bedford Forrest fought a war against his own government to enslave people and then led the Ku Klux Klan. That's never been a secret, so who is he inspiring? One artist is lifting spirits by resurrecting the work of other artists who depict not generals and statesmen, but in many cases, ordinary people whose images embolden a new generation. I find candid photos of people around the community where you can see real people doing real things on a daily basis more interesting in the long run than just famous people. The architecture of Chicago's Bronzeville neighborhood gives a peek into the past, an African-American metropolis with a legacy of civil rights and music. But memories fade with each generation. Artist Chris Devins is using vintage photos to remind them these powerful images seem bigger than life, and now they are. The purpose of these images is to reconnect the building with its Bronzeville community and reconnect Bronzeville to its historical identity, the rich historical legacy that it has. I sort of wanted to send a subtle message to uh, out here that just about the stylishness and uh, coolness of some of the residents of the area. Obviously, these are two really cool gentlemen here. Devins erects portraits of what may be ancestors for many of the people who still live here. It's just two older gentlemen, as you can see the style of dress and the standard of how you had to look back in 1941 uh, was much higher. <laughs> so. His canvas is this old building where Mark Collins works at Bell Store Storage. Unfortunately, it was like a shooting gallery. Vandals hit this historic building hard, but his boss, Helmut Malacher, agreed to allow Devins to put up the murals. This building used to get tagged in the panels behind us. With graffiti. With graffiti, furiously. And once these panels went up, people stop, they look, there's no spray paint, there's no anything. The best thing that's on this building now are eyes. staring at faces from 1941, decades before Devins was even born. But why reproduce something that's already so wonderful? Yeah. So sometimes as artists, you're unearthing and presenting treasures rather than creating them. The images were taken by two photographers hired by the government as part of a public works project. Rather than come in and take the easy route and just dramatize poverty and things like that, they resisted that easy sell. And um, it's always easy to, to film drama. Uh, it's, much e it's much more difficult to make everyday life interesting. Their lenses capture qualities that aren't usually associated with poverty, elegance, and joy. A remarkable insight that tells a different story than what most people outside this neighborhood might expect 
What may surprise you is that these perceptive photographers are white. Edwin Roscombe and Russell Lee. I love how, you know, we look at these beautiful photos and then you find out it's a white guy. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> They came to Bronzeville on a Sunday morning in 1941 with African-American author Richard Wright for the book 12 Million Voices. Their main goal, I think, was to sort of capture poverty and the drama and the quote-unquote ghetto. And what the photographers did instead when they got here, they found dignity and other things going on that were more interesting. And, you know, they captured regular life and they found a dignity that they didn't think they were going to find here. They thought they were just going to find just poor people. Devins brings the images out of the dark room and into the light. And so here we are years later, and Edwin Roscombe and Russell Lee are still showing us what's cool and unique about Chicago in this area. What's cool about this film is when we melt it, it's going to look like paint. Devins has unique insight for this project. His father was Irish, a jazz musician from the north side of Chicago. His mother was African American. Uh, yes, she grew up right here in this, you know, the Ida B. Wells Madden Park projects. An they, artist they, living on the south side of Chicago. I experienced some discrimination from the grandparents on the Irish side. So from an early time, that gave me a sensitivity to racial issues. I'm sure my own exploration of identity as a multiracial person plays into my interest in identity overall. People can tour the neighborhood and discover these public artworks on a warehouse or a grocery store. The project also includes African-American icons like Louis Armstrong. Devin surveyed the neighbors to gauge their favorite. And the very first person they voted on, they wanted me to put up, was Nat King Cole. He carried himself in a certain way with an amazing dignity. Across the street, poet Gwendolyn Brooks keeps you company at a red light. This particular mural of Gwendolyn Brooks is here because the book there, she wrote that book and lived in, in this very building. I want them to be able to look, literally look up to these women from the past and know that they can do whatever they want to do in life, accomplish anything they want to accomplish. Historian Sherry Williams says a public art tribute to Bronzeville is long overdue. Our communities have been locked out of the ways that it takes to bring monuments and markers and murals to communities, so that is so needed. Photographs are no longer hidden in books tucked away on a library shelf. The art project captures the fabric of Bronzeville, the common laborer, the children, the grandparents, and yes, the famous artists and athletes. Those who have a legacy that they want to leave behind, no matter if they are shining shoes today or if they're a paper boy today, I really believe their story is important. Some argue that removing statues erases history, but rarely does art provide the context needed to learn anything. You can comprehend more from Columbus's diary or Washington's journal than you can from their statues and paintings. The successes and failures of these Bronzeville ancestors don't warrant any great debate, but they're still teaching us something. They can't speak to their descendants, but their images say it all. Poverty doesn't have to impede a sense of pride, a lesson Chris Devins hopes will revitalize Bronzeville to its glory days. If you want to see more of Chris Devins' art, you can go to chrisdevinscreative.com.
www.thetimecapsule.com. Coming up in the Time Capsule, JFK's visit to Chicago, 1962.